Empire of Ivory is the fourth novel in the Temeraire alternate history-slash-fantasy series by American author Naomi Novik. Set in Africa, the novel follows William Lawrence and his dragon Temeraire's search for a cure to the disease that has paralyzed the dragon community. Novik visited Southern Africa in search of places in the fourth novel. Empire of Ivory was released in paperback in North America by Del Rey on September 25, 2007. The British hardcover edition was published by Voyager on November 5, 2007. Lawrence and Temeraire arrived back in the United Kingdom, following their evacuation of Danzig in Black Powder War. Their relief at arriving safely is short-lived as Napoleon continues his preparations for an invasion of the British Isles. When questioned about the lack of British air support for the Prussians, Lawrence discovers that Britain had no dragons to spare, a flu-like epidemic has infected the greater part of them, and British science has yet to devise a cure. To combat it, Temeraire, Iskirka and the Ferals are forced to fly frantic patrols, both as a show of force and to prevent Napoleon. From getting reconnaissance in over the contaminated covers, at one point Temeraire is forced to knock a French courier dragon. Sauvignon, out of the sky and down into one of the covers, risking infection himself. Temeraire and Lawrence continue to develop their notions of draconic equality in British society and find common cause with William Wilberforce and the abolitionist movement in exchange for assistance from prominent political leaders. Before they can continue their plans, they are enlisted to return to Africa to seek a cure for the draconic flu, which Temeraire caught. And was cured of in Throne of Jade, his immunity is proven when he fails to contract the illness from Sauvignon and the other dragons. The entire formation is shipped to the Cape Colony aboard the Allegiance, along with a black missionary, Reverend Josiah Erasmus, formerly of the Lunda people, his wife Hannah and their daughters. The missionaries are manumitted slaves, causing tension between Lawrence and Allegiance Captain Tom Riley, a staunch supporter of the slave trade and occasional friend of Lawrence. Riley is also further thrown off balance by the discovery that some of the aerial corps officers, including Lily's Captain Catherine Harcourt, are women. After several weeks of searching, the formation makes land at the Cape of Good Hope, Maximus, the regal copper, is so weary that his handler Berkeley does not believe he will ever return home. However, enough fungi are found to cure the formation, and with the help of two African boys, Domain and Sipo, and their small dog, they set out to find more. In the end, they discover the fungus in a cave, being fertilized by dragon dung, it has been deliberately cultivated. Scarcely has this realization set in that the aerial corps are beset by Swana humans and dragons, the British beasts, who have been sent back to the Cape with their precious cargo, are unable to prevent their air crews from being captured, and Reverend. Erasmus' attempts to intercede only lead to his death, as the Lunda are known slavers. The British contingent is taken captive and brought back to the Swana capital, a settlement at Muzio Atunia for imprisonment and interrogation. This is particularly challenging to Harcourt who had become intimate with Riley during the voyage and is now bearing his child. Hannah Erasmus, taken from the Swana some 20 years ago, is of particular importance during their captivity, not only is she able to provide some intercession for the British. But her word is given extra weight by Kefensi, her dragon ancestor who is overjoyed to have her back. The Swana, in addition to being fiercely offended by the depredations of the African slave trade on their people, practice a form of ancestor worship in which dragons are brought up to believe they are the reincarnations of former leaders. This makes their resistance to the slave trade even fiercer since dragons are deeply possessive of those humans they consider their own. Though Lawrence is able to establish some small rapport with Prince Masyushu and apologize for the mushroom theft, the ancestors Maka Chain and Kefensi remained unconvinced by the mere words of Lawrence. Temeraire, who has picked up some Kosa from Domain and Sipo, is able to talk the location of Muzio Atunia out of some feral dragons, and he, Dulcia and Lily organize an escape for their crews. But before they have managed to return to the Cape, the Swana are already on overrunning the colony, and indeed all European ports on the African coast. Lily's formation retreats to Great Britain aboard the Allegiance, whilst at sea, Riley marries Catherine Harcourt, more at his insistence than hers. Upon returning to Britain, they discover that the latest abolitionist bill in Parliament was defeated by strong opposition from Admiral Horatio Nelson and that Sauvignon, now infected with the plague, has escaped back to France. Lawrence and Temeraire are horrified to realize that government and admiralty alike have countenanced the wholesale slaughter of, not only every French dragon but quite probably every dragon in Eurasia. Acting on their consciences, they steal a tub of cultivated mushrooms and fly the English Channel to deliver the cure to the French. For this, they earn the personal respect of Napoleon Bonaparte, 
but Lawrence turns down the emperor's offer of asylum, preferring to return to his beloved commonwealth and answer for his treason. Naomi Novik went to Africa to do research for Empire of Ivory, including hiking and a safari in Botswana. Thanks for watching.